Hello, and welcome to the penultimate round here for the MFNSRA SCS schedule of the Season 9. As we are closing in on the end of this season, a lot is lining up for Season number 10 and coming up, but a lot is on the line, and we got ourselves a big championship fight between Charles Sanford. His first win in the SCS came at this track here, Winning here today couldn't be any more crucial. Coming this race 12 points down to Nick Mace. Nick Mace, he's wrecked here before, and he's came runner-up here before. Today, winning would be big for him to try and close out the deal and stretch a little bit of a good points to give him a little bit of a breathing room to try and win his first MFNSRA SCS championship in his ninth attempt. Eric Burton, his first attempt, though. And he is just as evenly as strong as Nick Mace. He has only four wins this season. The same amount of top fives, eight top fives this season as Nick Mace. And still right there with ten top tens this season. Right now, coming in this race, five points down to Nick Mace. This is shaping up to be one heck of a dogfight. Andres Allen, Eugene Max, still mathematically in the fight, but... I don't see them coming a champion here in Season 9. Let's get you down to the starting lineup. As the pace car leads the pack of 26 <clears throat> through turns three or through turns four. Off turns were four. Daniel Day has the pullman alongside as Charles Sanford going for the championship here. The pace car pulls in. We're getting ready to go for 11 laps here at Zenjoltis. Here we go. Green flag is out here. Here at Zenjoltis. Daniel Day off, turns number one. He still has the lead, and I am kind of wary about this Zenjoltis race. I don't know if they're going to play it calm or safe or go all out for it. Just going through the field here. Charles Sanford on the outside of Daniel Day. Sanford, he won here for his first race all the way back in Season 3. And ever since then, Charles Sanford has had himself... His fair share of wins. Seven wins and coming into this season with a shot to win the championship better than any other season he's had. Still, we're only going two by two, which is kind of impressive. <clears throat> I expected them to go three wide here, but they're going double file just about like they was on the start. Charles Sanford up on the high side, staying up there with Daniel Day, Richard Johnson hanging in on the inside there with Nick Mace right in behind there. So not really anybody's pulling out or getting a good run or anything. They're just kind of keeping their own good where they're at running right now. There we are, three wide there with James Star, Fox, Dom Caps, Hayden Klein get kicked up high there. There's your second place in points right there, Eric Burton coming in this round right here for Burton in the 16. He needs to come out of here and at least stay at least right where he's at in the points because leaving this race about five points down to where he was Entering this race, that could be really good for Burton, but he's up high. 
Then near the middle line and near the rear of the field there. But still, we are keeping our very own cool as we run right now. I'm impressed with these guys that they're not going crazy like I thought they want, were going to go. But Nick Mason, the 48, got his teammate Eugene Max right in behind him there. Demax has to come out of this race with a... Uh, basically, Demax, if he wants to still win, the, be in the fight for this championship, he has to win at Nick Mace, Sanford, um, and Eric Burton all finish really, really poorly. So it's almost not going to happen. Daniel Day continuing the lead, however, with Nick Mace right behind. Mace peeks up high, but Day's going to throw the block. And look at the Max here. To the inside goes Eugene. To the inside of his teammate there of Nick Mace. Still really impressed by everybody's actions here. They're not really going all out like I thought they were going to go. And they're really creeping around this racetrack. Not really fast at all. As they're having a restricted engine for this race. And you would think they would be more bunched up, but they're, this is allowing the drivers to not really be able to pass much, which is actually surprising. Mace up high, not where you want to be. Sanford's also up high, along with Eric Burton. Andres Allen also up, up, up high as well. Eugene Max won here last season, trying to get himself a third Zincholtis win. Remember, he won here in Season 5 and Season 8. Trying to win back-to-back -back seasons here from Season 8 and Season 9. At the inside of Daniel Day for the lead. He has Greg Brown right in behind him there. Greg in the six cars really had little to no luck this season, but we expect him to do some good. He's going over to Evernell Motorsports. He's going to own that team, and that team is looking very strong with um, Brad Johnson and Jacob Hart also in behind in that stable there as well. And look at the Wood Brothers car right here, Zach Flickinger. This car has not had a top 10 finish all season long and has been borderline with Zach Flickinger if to keep him in the car or not. But he's way low the inside of Noah Hart there looking low on um, Greg Brown but not going to get it, get him there. I'm impressed with Nick Mace there. Him and Daniel Day both on the outside there has made the pass back up high around his teammate of Eugene Max. That's really good for them, their efforts there. Look at this car right here. The other Hendrick car of um, James Sorfox also charging his way forward up on the high side there. So with the restricted engines for this race is allowing the outside to actually be a very good line here. Not, well, not very good, but just to be able to good enough to hang in right there. But Day continuing to lead. But here comes to Max though. He's fighting back on the inside there. Whoa, Richard Johnson really up high there. Trying to see if he can find any help there. Dylan Young's coming to help. But I don't know if that way up high groove there will work. As these cars are slowly crawling around this racetrack. Where is Eric Burton? Second in the standings. There he is way far back in the field. So is Charles Sanford. That is a good sign right there for Nick Mace as they run right now. Ashley Mace is... She's running like a. She's running like eight seconds off the leader's lap here. So Ashley Mace has probably had some sort of troubles there. As ever since her win um, out at Darlington in the Southern 500, she has not even had a top 10 finish since then. So she's kind of been struggling. Demax there in the 24. Now, if Demax was running in second place here. And Mace was running back there with Burton and Sanford. Demax probably could be back in the fight by barely to be in the fight for the championship. But Mace in the inside groove there, fighting his way forward, pushing Greg Brown along there. This race is looking a little bit like Talladega, as they're keeping their cool, which is really impressive that these guys are keeping their cool for this long. Andres Allen up high. Greg Brown. Sorry, someone came in my room. Greg Brown. <laughs> um, right there in second place there.
for Greg Brown. This is really good for him because Greg Brown has only had four top tens this season. And that was all coming consecutively in one row. He had so many top tens and one finish in a row. That Greg Brown was looking to be a strong suit for this championship as the way he was running there. But then all of a sudden he just like died in the middle part of the season. Really couldn't get any runs going for him in the, any good way. Mace up high trying to get a run on Brown there. Up high with Andres Allen, Sean Perkins, Luke Martin in behind there. But I don't know if it'll be enough to get by Daniel Day. Day in the 8 car looking very strong. Almost like Ashley Mace back from Season 7. Continuing to lead. As this is a really strange pack. As they're only going about 2 and 3 wide. You don't see much 4 wide there. As they're keeping their cool here. <clears throat> Greg Brown in the 6 car. His last win in the MFNSRI SCS came pretty much all the way back um, in season number two at Martinsville. is the only one I can think of right off the bat here. Brown getting help from Brandon Bain, and he's right up on the back bumper of Daniel Day here. But Brandon Bain to the inside there for the position there on Greg Brown. Across our finish line, we will only have ourselves... Six more laps to go. Greg Brown has lost second place to Brandon Bain. Bain to the inside of Daniel Day here. Day has been just so, so strong. And the eight, it ain't even a Budweiser on it. Rated PG, guys. Uh, we can't have Budweiser on the car. Um, Daniel Day up high and his lost lead to Brandon Bain. Bain has experience of winning on the Super Speedways. Remember season three of the 500. But Greg Brown's looking. Greg to the inside, can't get him there. Look at this cat right up here too. Luke Martin, the 18 Interstate Batteries, Chevrolet. He only has one top five this entire season. Came out at Kentucky, and Kentucky got a top 10 there as well, and Talladega got a top 10. So Luke Martin trying to make a late season name for himself to the inside of Greg Brown for second spot. But let's look here. Where's Nick Mace at? He's pretty far back here. Really far back here. Where's his championship rivals? Eric Burton is a little bit further forward. So that's going to be points to him. But Mace is found the inside now. Look at Charles Sanford to the inside here. Inside of his teammate there. Sanford really looking like he may gain a lot of points here. We're looking four wide here with Chris Summers. And Chris, um, I didn't even mention his whole entire name. This in um, the last few races. He came into Kentucky replacing Ian Duda. Chris Washer, I think that's how you say his name, is return is going to be in next season's season 10. Driving for Roush for the 99. So he's getting himself some experience. Bill Davis Racing only has two top 10 finishes this entire season so far. Chris trying to bring them to another solid finish. A top 10. But look at this guy up here. Charles Sanford trying to win a second. It's in Joltis race here. But the car riding behind him here, that one in Season 3, drove four. Jacob Park charging his way forward there with William Duncan and Allen in behind. But coming back to the start finish line, only be three laps to go. Can Sanford hold off to win his third win of the season? Sanford won back to back races early on in the season. The first two races of the season, he won. Ever since then, he's just been consistent. And now, trying to win the race here. This could be really big for his hopes of this championship. He holds off. Take apart William Duncan here. But William Duncan really wants to win for Roush Fenway here. 
He's leaving Roush Midway after this season. Did not get an offer for them to drive for next season. So he is moving over to the Fuel Brothers for next season. That's his owner right up in front of him there. You gotta think they may work together here to try and get by the 17. But William Duncan is also still teammates with the 17. So will he be loyal to his future teammate? Or will he be te um, teammates with his teammate here now? But Jacob Hart trying to slide in front of the 97. He wants to get down in front of him there, but it's not going to happen. Make it Roush 1-2. And look at this guy right here. He was in the back. And now he's clawing his way forward. Nick Mace right there. But Chris Summers is holding the bottom groove there. That might not be good. He slides in front of Sean Gallagher. And look at right there. Right up in front of him there as well. Oh, <laughs> Sean Galligan pushes Nick Mace up. Nick Mace and Eric Burton are side by side there. Charles Sanford continuing to lead. He may end up taking the points lead after this race if he can hold off. Here we go with only two laps to go. Roush Fenway 1-2. William Duncan, you know he wants to win a race. It's been so, so long for William Duncan. Season 2 Texas. Well, I also forgot another one. Season 2 Texas season well no he's only won at season two texas so i was thinking of seasons he's been in season three and season seven also that he's been in along with season six nick mace clawing his way forward but so is his rival eric burton nick mace way low to the inside they're trying to get every position as possible look at him slicing and dicing there burton is in his inside there James Sorofox in the 25, he's also trying to get up there and win for the first time this season as he and the 25 car, I don't think Sorofox is not returning next season, so he wants to go out with a bang. But Charles Sanford trying to hold off for just a lap and a half to go, but his teammate Eric Burton is climbing his way forward now in the third position there. It would mean so much for Sanford to win this race here at this time of the season coming to the white flag now it's Sanford, Sorofox, Burton Bain that's the top four white flags in the air here comes Eric Burton now Eric Burton is to the inside whoa Daniel Day to the, the eight car who was late just a few laps ago he's got a pit and Nick Mace in the 48 where is he at there he is up on the high side there Eric Burton in the 16 car he's looking low he's trying to get his fifth career SES victory but Brandon Bain was inside there Mace up the middle Mace trying to climb his way forward to his teammate to see if he can't challenge the 16 here four wide further back for 10 the 17 is looking all good so far now Charles Sanford's got to lead their four wide for second place John Dillon down low Oh, look at Eric Burton shoot out of a rocket there. But Nick Mace trying to find a way back to the 16 here. That's valuable points. John Dillon has a run here. Look at Eugene Max. He's trying to repeat both seasons back-to-back -back winning at Zinjoltis here. He has help from Dylan Young, but can he get low with the 17 here? I don't think he can. No, he can't. John Dillon's got one last shot this turn here. Charles Sanford. A win in the late in the season is going to mean it all here. Charles Sanford may just take the point lead as he runs here. Charles Sanford's going to win his third race of the season. Charles Sanford wins here at St. Joltis. Eric Burton at Bearfield. Charles Sanford at St. Joltis. Them guys are not giving up. Nick Mace will finish ninth. Eric Burton will finish seventh. So going into the finale, Eric Burton will only be three points down to Nick Mace, and so will Charles Sanford. And that finish by Charles Sanford will eliminate. Eugene Max from this championship and it will also eliminate Andreas Allen from the championship as well.
This is race number 14. And Nick Mace will get his 12th consecutive top 10 finish in a row. In a row. That is amazing. I can't believe he's went this long with top 10s in a row. 12 of them in a row. And still the point leader. He took the points lead at Las Vegas in season 3. From Eric, not Eric Burton, he took the points lead from this guy, Charles Sanford, on race number three. And has never took it back from anyone else. But Sanford sits three points down to Nick Mason. So does his teammate, Eric Burton. Burton will also be three points down to Nick Mace going into the finale at Washington, D.C. for the Season 9 Championship. Mace Brown... Mace Burton Sanford that is your guys going for the championship let's get you to your finishing results